I'm Ann McLean from the Library's Music Division. It's a great pleasure for me tonight to introduce our artists, cellist Jamal Aliyev and pianist Fazal Zai. Welcome. Hosh Geldinus. We're delighted that you're here with us on November 3rd, which is the library's 125th birthday. And I know you saw the lines of happy people coming up the stairs as we're celebrating. So it's great to have you with us to celebrate. And this recital is really a cellist dream with the Arpeggione Sonata of Franz Schubert and the Big Franck Sonata and Fossil, your Four Cities Sonata. Um, is this your first American tour? I know you won the Concert Artist Prince. Yeah, wonderful. Well, we're glad to have you on this. The two of you have really had an amazing run of major projects this year, an incredible collaboration, and it's continuing. We were just talking about the big Shamaran concerto that premiered last year, and just you've just recorded it. Um, no, I will be recording it. Be recording it? Will be, yes. Will be. And I'd like to hear a bit more about that and about some of your other projects and how you came to be collaborators. And maybe we could start with that. How did you come to be working together? So, yes, um, I auditioned. There's a, uh, like a... More, uh, what is it called? Like, like foundation. Foundation, yes, sorry. Uh, in Turkey, in Istanbul, that I auditioned when I was, it was in 2018. That's where um, Fazl was in the jury. So that's how we met. He, I got in and then we did a concert together, two concerts. I think it was in 2019. And after that, we, uh, we got on well and we played a few concerts. We recorded a CD. I premiered the Shahmiran concerto, yes. And now we are here touring with, uh, and it's, it's amazing for me, as you can imagine, like, as it would be for any musician. I was going to ask, too, I believe you won the Fossil Sci Award, and I was wondering, is that the foundation you're, re you're referring to, or is that a separate thing? Yeah, that, that was the Fossil Sci Award, which allowed me to perform two concerts with him in 2018. I wanted to talk with you, have you tell us the story of the Four Cities Sonata, which is the centerpiece of our program tonight. You really created a journey through a quartet of cities with very distinct cultures. So please tell us about that. Yes, uh, good evening everybody. Well, um, with Jamal, uh, we are on a long US tour, US and Canada. So he is doing almost everywhere his debut concerts, like I did uh, 25 years ago as a winner of Young Concert Artist, and he is now Artist Guild. Uh, concert Artist Guild, yeah. Yes. And uh, it is going very well with two, three different programs. But in each program, we play the Four Cities Sonata for sure because it represents, of course, our, our, our country, our culture, and uh, with folkloric elements of four different cities, as you say, not only folkloric, also political, and also uh, from the stories. Mm -hmm. So these four cities are Sivas, in, in mini eastern Anatolia, uh, begins with a folk song and ends with, uh, with a instrument called Kaval or Duduk, so he will imitate this kind of instrument. Second city is Hopa. This is very close to Georgian border on, on Black Sea. Hmm. And you've been in Turkey? Not yet, yeah? Quite a lot. You've been quite a lot? You've been also in, in Black Sea? Never been to the Black Sea. Black Sea area is amazing. Um, and uh, that is so green and uh, kind of wild too. I mean, Hopa is Caucasian folklore culture and and Eastern Black Sea, Horon, Kemenche, these this instruments, maybe you can explain after I speak. Kemenche uh, is, is a small violin um, played with a bow like a double bass, so it is a folklore instrument. Third woman, this Ankara is a, the darkest and longest slow moment in, in this sonata. And uh, has also, people will understand why. 
and uh, fourth movement is Bodrum, is a jazzy piece on the bar street of Bodrum, uh, and in the end of the sonata, cellists and pianists are fighting. <laughs> That's the Bodrum, is that the one? For the third movement, is that the one where you play inside the piano? Exactly. Uh, yeah. yeah. What is it that you're doing? You're imitating a sound of a specific instrument, I think. Uh, yes, sounds, and um, you know, if if there, there is a way creating micro tonalities and uh, with left hand prepara preparation inside the strings, uh, we can create more close to ethnical sounds, of, of course. You know, I know that folk music is important to both of you, and you've both talked about this and written about this, and I, I think, Jamal, if I, read, if I remember what I read correctly, your family has a very strong background in Western classical music and also vernacular traditions as well. And I was thinking about, in, in your, both for both of you, um, how you are reflecting this in your passion for this music. Like, the, you have a new album, a very new album, but you also have performed a lot of Turkish folk music at the various parts of your travels together. Um, in terms of this, what, what is your thinking about um, how to bring alive this music for Western audiences? It doesn't take much to give ringing alive. It's it's pretty amazing. Yeah, as you say, we we just recorded this year a duo CD with Jamal, that is including the Four Cities Sonata, a new work of mine, also a pandemic work for solo cello. During the lockdowns, I composed. A, a friend of us died for him. I composed, mm -hmm. and. Of course, my music is representing the Turkish uh, folklore and folk music. You are right with this. But he is also playing other contemporary pieces or other Turkish composers or even arrangements of famous songs. The new album you have, that, are you talking about Hayat Ayatür? Yeah, Tree of Life. Yeah, talk a little bit about that. Cause this is av available now. It is really just a month ago it came out. Yes, it's available on all the digital platforms. Uh, like Fazl said, it has his new work, which we premiered in Istanbul. And the work is called The Tree of Life. So the album is called that, and the suite, cello suite is the five pieces, five songs, right? It, that he dedicated to his family, actually, like his mom, his father, and his wife. And um, the first movement is Hope. Second movement is his dad, Ahmed Sai. Third moment is his wife, Ege. Fourth moment is his mom. And last moment is also called the Tree of Life. Um, so, yeah, uh, it was really amazing for me to be able to perform this piece because it's so personal for him. And he, him giving me the chance to play with him and record it was really a huge honor to do. And we had really fun. We recorded it in Izmir. And, yeah, and it's available on digital platforms. And we are actually performing... The, this Hayat Aji in some concerts, but not here, unfortunately. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, it's beautiful. I listen but, to but it. But we can do one moment of it as an encore if you want. Okay. Yes, as yes, we should. Perfect, perfect. <laughs> And I was curious about the, the, our program notes tonight, written by a colleague in the music division, talk about um, a figure who I know was extremely important in Turkish culture, Ashok Vesel. And his song is referenced in one of the movements, I believe, of, of your sonata. Is that correct? Yeah, she was. He, um, Ashok Vesel is a folk minstrel, actually the last of this tradition of... Uh, um, songwriters of mm. uh, and uh, he was a blind man all his life and uh, I did a, a very famous solo piano piece 90s Black Earth and played this in Washington DC also seven times until now but uh, in my debut recital in 97 in, in Kennedy Center I did that. Um, and um, after so many years, uh, composed the Four City Sonata 2011 by a commission work by BBC. Mm -hmm. So the premiere was with Nicolas Stett. 
And he recorded also with me the sonata for Warner Classics 2014. So Kamal is doing actually the second recording, but he is doing something else. He is doing my complete cello works with piano and solo cello. And next year is the project he is going to record my newest piece, Shahmaran, uh, uh, Mesopotamia Mythos, uh, for cello and orchestra with the great Deutsche Symphony Orchestra. Wonderful. He will record this in Berlin. Mm -hmm. So about Aşık Veysel, of course, his philosophic words and uh, human, humanistical view, point of view, is um, giving all uh, artists, not only classical, also jazz artists or painters or, or or uh, poets is an inspiration. It has been always an inspiration. Ashik Vesal with his very natural philosophic poetry. So that's why I keep walking, still come back to Ashik Vesal in because it remembers me the uh, soul and the earth of Anatolia always. I was thinking about your, you have a new piece called Yeni Hayat, I think, yes. uh, which is brand new, relatively speaking, and I was thinking about your comments about that, how it was a recovery period, like a transition after the pandemic for so many people. Talk a little bit about this and about your thinking about the role of the artist in right. our society. Mm. Yeni Hayat, so it's called New Life Sonata. Um, it is composed in summer 21, 2021. So just a, after one and a half year of pandemic lockdowns, we try to begin our concert lives in open air places with 50% audience, all this you remember better than me. And um, that called new life why? because all this COVID pandemic and st stopping our jobs for in our lives the first time, and I hope last time. And uh, well, I uh, of course worked at home uh, in, in my garden, so many new works composing and learning new pieces like Bach Goldberg variations. And so, so with in with Yeni Hayat Sonata, which is a so short sonata, 12 minutes. Uh, I wanted to tell all the drama about um, the pandemic times, but also the in, in the last moment, the hope uh, and the happiness for the future, that it's going to be better. For now, it's not better with the war and everything, and uh, but we still keep in hope that this world can be better, you know. That is the message of the sonata. As your question is about what an artist can say, yes. I can say this with music, and uh, played the piece in Turkey and Europe over hundred times now. North America debut of that piece is in Toronto on Sunday okay. in my recital. This is a, a, a wonderful evening for us just to, to have you both here. We we're excited about this. We know uh, so many of you are, are new to the library's concerts. These are the artists, these are the types of artists we like to present, very thoughtful and remarkable. So I know they need to rehearse a little bit to warm up for the concert. So I think maybe this is where we will say goodbye. If you want to take a quick tour out in the hall and see what's going on upstairs and something, come right back. Is there anything else you'd like to say before we pause here? Okay. I am very um, happy to be in, in this place for me the first time. Next year I will come with the National Orchestra to Washington in, in January next year, 2024 actually. But this is a fantastic acoustic, a historical place. Maybe Jamal should know that Bartok played here, Corto, and you said Bernstein. Stravinsky. Stravinsky. So, so it is a magical, historic place 
with a great acoustic. We have a very nice uh, public tonight, uh, and also a lot of Turkish community. We are very happy to see them here. And uh, the library has uh, all the manuscript, original handwriting of many composers in the biggest library, music library of this world. I've been with Anne today afternoon, and uh, she showed me some of the pieces I played, uh, Mozart and Beethoven. So it is for us an honor to be here. Thank you, Anne. Oh, thank you. Thank you.